But because of that, I eventually got um, a mini break. I was working for an uncle of mine, one of my favorite uncles, like the coolest uncle. So you're working, um, so this was after uni? Essex. Okay, back. Essex. Okay. So I'd been working with my uncle in Essex, where he runs a clearing farm. Mm. And I would sit back in the evenings and listen to Elvis on drive time. Mm. And then I'd listen to BBC and then I'd, I'd record myself on, you know, those old cassette players where you record your voice. And then I'd listen back and it sounded horrific. <laughs> it was terrible. It was just, it was pathetic. And then I'd delete, you know, erase rather, and then record, and then record again. And then over and over and over and over. So the time when I asked Christine Marjorie, uh, mm. amazing woman, um, and she knows it, like she's awesome people. <laughs> uh, so I tell her, I want to do radio. And she takes me to Hussein, who was the guy, and Romeo Akiki, who were the guys doing production at Capital at the time. And they gave me a voice test yeah. and then gave me an advert to do. I'll never forget that ad. It was for a Nile special commercial, okay. which was a bit of conflict of interest because I'd, I'd become really strong in my work with God in terms of faith. So I'm here doing an advert for alcohol, but then I was so passionate about wanting to do this that I didn't sleep that night. I was thinking, I have sinned, Lord. I have sinned. <laughs> I have done a beer commercial. I have sinned. You were born again quite early, though. I got oh, born yeah. again at nine. Nine? Yeah. Okay. So, well, I, and then back did immediately, but you know, I, Inside, I was but still. You started on the path yeah. Okay. So I do that, and then, and then I see uh, some adverts. Channel TV went on air at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was owned by the Madvani Group, and I saw some adverts. They were looking for some presenters, and I applied for that. And by some stroke of favor, I got I got that gig. Okay. Now at that time, I'd also been trying to pester Irene for a voice test at Radio One. And then I think one of those days, so I go to Channel TV, I'm doing continuity presenting with them. Um, my boss at the time was an amazing guy. You probably know him, Gabriel Kakuru. He now runs Brand Active. Mm. And so, you know, she sort of said, yeah, come, let's do this thing. Okay. And then Irene sees me on TV and says, and she's like, that's the guy. So the next time I think I call the radio to try and win some money, she gets a hold of me and I think she got my number. Mm. We don't have mobiles at the time. You had to get a landline. Mm. So I get back home and she's been trying to look for me. And she says, come in and do a test. Okay. And so I go to Radio 1 <coughs> to, do a, to do a test. And um, she was excited about my potential. Okay. And then she put me in the production for a week to try and do some tests with um, another amazing guy called Dennis Matanda, I'm sure you know him, mm -hmm. and Philip Pesimire. Mm. And those two insane gentlemen who are now very respectable people <laughs> um, <laughs> messed up my life because they were, they were just really cool and all, in a good way. I mean, okay, so yeah. they changed the path. But they completely changed the path in terms of thinking creative, in terms of thinking crazy, in terms of... And so that weekend, I, I get to go on air because uh, I think it was... Daisy Asimwe, Nabi Arugaba, who was doing the weekend program at the time on Saturday mm. mornings, and she couldn't make it, and Irene says, you're going on now. There's the opportunity. Panic! Panic! <laughs> and I went on, and uh, Irene was very impressed with how I did, because okay. I didn't seem to have any jitters that you normally have when you do a show like that for the very first time. And I ended up doing that for a little bit on the weekends, and then eventually went to Monitor FM, which is now KFM when it opened okay. at the time, mm -hmm. um, to do production. Mm -hmm. And then the guy who was doing... See, when you went to Monitor, you went on air? No, no, I wasn't on air. So, I, I, so interesting story there. <coughs> I go to Monitor to do production. And then within maybe about two weeks or so, I think it was Robert Sega who was doing the breakfast at the time. Mm -hmm. he, had, he got a gig and needed to leave abruptly. Okay. And then, so... I'm like, you know, uh, I'm here. I can do it. <laughs> and we had uh, an amazing Canadian boss called Oliver Murray. And he was also insane. He says, why not? Let the kid go on. Okay. And so I end up doing that show with um, a great lady called Susan Ayat, who mm -hmm. I think works at the airport in Entebbe now. And then eventually with another crazy woman called Anne Kiza, who is now Anne Kiza Rosenbach. Mm. She's now Norwegian. Um, 
and that was fun. You too can get Chocha! Top of every Monday and get 10 times bonus data bundle with Chocha Monday. Log on to www.smile.co.ug or visit any Smile outlet and top up now. Smile. Now you can. But during that time, I'm trying to solidify my journey with God. So I'm trying, because I'm, I'm called to be a teacher and preacher. That's okay. what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. And I'm, I'm asking God, how do I do that better? So this whole time, because you're on secular radio, working yeah. in that area, yeah. you felt the conflict. I'm, I'm, I'm having to repent every night when I go back home. That's a bit intense. No, it's foolish. Um, because we forget that when Jesus was here, he spent more time with sinners than he did with Pharisees. And sometimes I think we completely get it wrong. Mm. And there's a, a bit of self-righteousness that comes with thinking that you're doing holy things when you're not necessarily doing that. Um, I think the bottom line is having a, an understanding of where God has called you to and what mm. he has called you to do and being able to do that properly. We are called to be in this world, not of this world. Mm. And so I eventually learned that properly and the, the day I did, then it became much easier for me to do that. Okay. But then thankfully, uh, also at that time, um, one of my mentors, one of my idols, heroes, great friend, I call him Papa, he's like, uh, we call him Musei, he's like my, my father, Pastor Chris Kamagom, um, mm -hmm. then at Watoto, came to do an interview with us on the show. And then he said, why don't you come help us um, try and get Power FM power sorted. FM. Mm. Yeah, so that's how I ended up going to power the first time, mm -hmm. 2002, going into 2004. And then in 2004 is when I then joined you at Sanyu. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a story there, actually. Uh, you remember Karanja, our boss. Best boss I've ever had. Never, never seen a boss like that. So when, when I get a call from Sanyu, I'd actually been fired from power for being a subordinate. Um, ah. Yeah. But some of you guys didn't know that at the time, so <laughs> it, it was like providence in a way. Mm. But it was good for me because I'd, I'd gotten a bit of a big head. Okay. Um, and so, in hindsight, I look back and I'm grateful for all those experiences. Because I remember us once having a conversation, and you said life had humbled you. It does. And you needed it. You needed. You felt now when you look back, you felt you really needed it. it. Look, if if you've gone through life and you haven't been humbled. Mm. Ask for it. You need it. Mm. Because it changes your perspective. It changes the way you look at people. It changes the way you end up raising your children. If, if nothing goes wrong in your life, I think there's something that will always be missing in, in your life. Mm -hmm. And, and I was, I'm, I'm grateful for everything that has gone wrong in my life. Because mm -hmm. it makes you a stronger person. It makes you a better person. And I didn't know it at, at the time. But there was a lot worse yet to come, come. In, in my future. I'm going to remind um, you of something. I remember you saying back in the day that you're always right. Yeah. Do you remember saying that? Yeah. Like, I'm always yeah. right. And that's the arrogance that sometimes <laughs> needs to be taken out of you. Mm. And because, again, of being thrust into the limelight at a very early age yeah. mm -hmm. and being brilliant at the same time, there's a cockiness and, and really bad arrogance that comes with it. Mm. And until you've been humbled, mm it becomes difficult to take you in the direction that you need to go. And I think, no, I know, I don't think, I know that God will, will have to bring you down a little <laughs> bit for you to understand that it's not about you. Mm. And then he can build you up again and take you build in the right direction. So yeah. I, I no longer say I'm always right. Mm. Well, not as much anyway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Progress. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. a little St bit. Steady progress, right? Oh, Rachel. <laughs> she has to deal with you. I know she does. 
So you came oh, thank God for that moment. Yeah. But again, you came in as a program director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not Actually, as a producer. As Remember, a producer I, started as, as, I started as your producer mm -hmm. um, for you and, and for the guys in, in the breakfast, and mm -hmm. then ended up being program PD. Director. Mm -hmm. um, some of the best times of my life. <laughs> no, seriously. Because uh, I, I, I always tell people, I remember the, the drive time with, with you and Bungie. Mm. God, that was a good show. It was a fabulous show. <laughs> it was. That was a, I've, I don't think I've ever had a happier show on radio than that. The joke was that the drive time had, it was like two women giggling and laughing on the show the entire time. Because you guys used to laugh so hard and so much. Everything was just funny. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine our listeners just driving home and listening to this bubbly, bubbly. You guys laughed about everything and nothing. It was annoying. <laughs> and yet it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, it was... That was that was awesome, and then of course, the breakfast with um, Alan Kasuja, Mr. President at the time, with Fatboy and, and Melanie, and, and then I leave Sanyu to go do Big Brother Africa, mm -hmm. which was another amazing experience for me. It was short, but it was life changing. Yeah, uh, I remember. I think way? they uh, people never understand this, but mm. when you do the kind of jobs that we do, where you get any sort of public profile. Mm. The benefits that come your way can't be measured. I, I ended up doing some work for, for CELTA, CELTA Africa Challenge at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had to travel to West Africa to do some of the some gigs there. And I'll never forget getting off a plane in Sierra Leone, of all places. Mm. And a person at the immigration looked at me, looked at my passport, looked at me again and said, I've seen you somewhere. And I'm like, no way. And then he thought about it for a second and said, I know I've seen you somewhere. And then he said, you're the big brother guy. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even in the house. I was just a reporter for yeah, just a reporter, yeah. And so, and then it happened again in Ghana um, and another time in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And so that stuff changes a lot for you. <laughs> and so that was fun. And then I ended up going back to power mm -hmm. um, to be station manager and then MD. So at this time when you were doing these gigs, so mm -hmm. you weren't formally employed in one place, you were just... I was sort of, yeah, my, my dream had always been to do events management and to run my events management company. So I started that in 2007, it's called Celeste Media. Um, it's been very quiet over the last five years. We do small things here and there, but I'd wanted to do that, you know, mm -hmm. full time. And so I was doing most of the things under there. Um, and it was very helpful. And then of course the emceeing that, that yeah, we do. People take that lightly, but it's actually quite a big deal. I keep telling people it's a job. It I is mean, a job. People think, you know, you just, just stand there, but it's a job. The, the amount of money you've made from that has probably <laughs> paid your rent and school fees for the last three years, hasn't it? <laughs> we, we said we can be honest on this show, can't we? <laughs> no, it comes in handy. It, it does it come in, in handy. It's a lot of money. Mm. And but it's how you handle it, of course. It is. You've got to do it right. Are. Yeah. Yeah. What the, you bring to the not, job. There's not many of us who do that. Mm. Yeah. People don't want to hear that, but there's not many of us. Yeah, and if it's I, not just I, about holding the microphone. No, it's well. not. People think it's just that. No, it's not. You're looking at, you know, you work with the ushers, you work with the, the production behind the scenes. Because when you're standing there and everything falls apart, they they look at you. They don't you look at you. anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But also the the sort of events that that you and I do, for example, that you and I and uh, Mitch or Elvis and I think Flavia now. We don't just do any kind of event. Mm. There's a certain caliber of events that you're not just going to get, no offense to him, there are events that MC Cats won't do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's a great guy. He's able to do some amazing things good, at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. But there are events that you won't have 
the MC Katso, um, who else can I think of? But you get my point, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying this in, in any disrespectful way or anything, mm -hmm. but there's a certain level at which you need a certain level of experience, a certain age. Yeah. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing an event that's got 35 CEOs, mm. mm -hmm. and so th I think that for me comes in hand. It's, it's something that I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something you've built over time. Yes, it is. Yeah. But you've got to be able to maintain that consistency and to do it professionally every, every time you do it so people can keep, keep coming back to look for you. Um, and it's very interesting that in this entire time, we actually hadn't done a gig together until Two. last year. Well, we did the Coca-Cola one. Yes, yeah, but it yeah. wasn't quite like... Yeah, like so the, we did housing finance yeah. last year. Yeah. That was the first time that you and I had done a gig. Together. It was so much fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fifteen years in the making. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Whoa. I thought we weren't going to talk about Oh no, age, yeah, no. I mean, fifteen months. I meant. Fifteen <laughs> months. Hello. <laughs> I mean, fifteen years. Anyway, so you go to Power FM, mm -hmm. and um, how long were you there? Is this the time you met Rachel? Yeah. So I was Rachel's boss, actually, incidentally. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not like that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't dating her at the time. <laughs> yeah. And I was just her boss. But we, we became very good friends. And then, so that was 2008 to about 2012. Um, then about that time is when my firstborn came, Jeremiah. Yes. And You've talked about being born again. And I remember one thing that was covered in the media was that you stood up in front of the church and apologized. Yes. For having a child outside yeah. wedlock. No, yeah, see, it? you, that's, it's, not, it's not like that. How was it's, it? It's not then? about apologizing for having a child. It's about Only taking responsibility for your actions. Okay. Look, I, I'm a leader in, in the body of Christ. Okay. Not only in Watoto at the time, but as an individual, my calling as a teacher and a preacher of the Word of God, mm. that gives me a certain level of responsibility and it's something that we're lacking a lot in the church these days. Okay. I see a lot of people, a lot of high profile people, pastors and, and people like that, who make bad judgment calls and make mistakes. Uh, we call it falling in the church. Mm -hmm. And instead of taking responsibility for their weakness, they try to cover it up. Okay. And the bad thing about that is that you're, you're basically telling people that I'm perfect when you're not. It's hypocrisy. Mm. And yet, God calls us to a standard that is non-negotiable. Look, black is black, white is white, there's no in-between. Sin is sin. Well, when you get a beautiful gift of a child, yeah. outside right. what is considered a mistake, right. I mean... So let me ask you something. If you go rob a bank, mm. right? But that's not the same. It actually, it, the, the, the basic principle is the same. You might get a blessing, you might even go to church and tithe. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Think about it. Ah, see? See? No, no, no. I don't know. They, because again, you see, you're taking away other people's money as well. So I don't want to say... Yeah, but you're look. You're robbing the bank. You're yeah. robbing other people. Right. It, it's not when the same. It, it, the, the reason it's the same is that the principles of God don't change. God's standard doesn't change. It's mm. the same. Mm. So, and, and I'll, I'll explain why in in a moment but so in this day and age right if we're going by that right then you would say like abstinence before marriage yes is the way it's yes to be. it is hardly many people do that anymore but it's supposed to be the way even to go even people in the church aren't doing that no they're not which is wrong mm -hmm. okay and they need to know that and I, I can tell you if i had a way of being able to go and fix that i would i can't mm. uh but the thing is so when it, it Romans 8 says all things work for good mm -hmm. to those who love the Lord. And eventually they do for me as well. When, when JJ was born, and please don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. JJ was not a mistake. No, JJ said. saved my life. Gift. Yes, it was. Mm. It might not have come in an ideal way, right? And my being able to go before the body of Christ, before the church, and to say, the way this came about is not ideal, it's not right. And I've let you down as a church because I'm supposed to be living to a higher standard than this. And that's what I'm apologizing for because it is required of me as a leader. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. That's what I'm apologizing for, mm. not for the fact that I've had a child. Mm. My okay. child is a child, is a blessing and they come. And they turn out to be a blessing because, uh, and many people now know this story, it's no longer 
very private but I ended up in some really deep deep trying to find the politically correct word cow dung let's, let's use that mm. financially and I ended up in a ton of debt and again refer to public profile image to maintain and all this mm. debt and people are threatening to take you to jail um, I had bank loans that I've never been able to pay t to this day mm. because of that time and was it bad business decisions a, a bit of bad business decisions a bit of stupidity I, I, I think we I, I call it financial stupidity which many vendors are still suffering from mm -hmm. um, and have refused to learn from mm. and so it's a combination of, of both and so I end up in a in a mountain of debt and it took a toll as a, as a man being in a place where you're not in control of that and you have people pounding you left right center people threatening i have spent a few nights in jail uh including the week of our wedding yeah the people who some of the people who i owed money figured if i'm getting married i must have money so they said we let's take this guy to jail the money will show up he must be using our money to get married which wasn't true of course but in their wisdom yeah i know you look <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, it was quite humbling. But the good thing about it is, at the time when JJ was born, like I was explaining, um, I'd, I'd become literally suicidal. I'd decided to take my own life. It, it happens. Uh, trust me, you, no, you, you, no, you, you'll be shocked at the number you of, see, especially you men. See a way out. No, because you don't see a way out. You're thinking, oh, this is over, I'm done. You know, the easiest way is let me go. Uh, and the two things that I remember that kept me going at the time was one, I'm not too sure God approves of this, so I don't want to die and go to hell. So if I die and then God says that wasn't acceptable, so sorry, I'm not taking you in, I can't fix that. Thinking, mm -hmm. ah, it's going to be a problem. And then the second thing was JJ, because that's the time that he then steps onto the scene, and I remember that day. It's the 6th of September, 2012. I'm at IHK holding this little bundle of joy in my hands. And I'm thinking, I never wanted kids, by the way. Mm. I never wanted kids. I was too selfish. I didn't want kids. Mm. 